welcome you viewers i'm dr 97 presenting you a topic new topic about efficiency in fire emblem so let me introduce a topic efficient efficiency you might have heard this term if you check tireless unit discussions whether it was a chat or a debate most of you probably got roasted by an experienced player at some point when you did a mistake frankly speaking efficiency in a game is a complex term before defining efficiency in which there are multiple definitions fire emblem is a single player game so feel free to play however you like but keep in mind that efficient strategies will make your game a lot easier to play and you should consider using a few of them if not all especially if you don't agree with a specific strategy or point okay so rank runs and ranking systems on the earlier days of tiring around a decade ago or so players obviously had no clue on how to define tires They had no metric to define what strat was optimal and what strategy was not optimal. Say for the official challenge of the game office, the S rank run. Several games in the series had it at that point, which include Genealogy, Tracia, Binding Blade, and Blazing Sword. Rank runs. In case you don't know them, ranks are how you play in specific. play through it's basically a performance in a category it generally had tactics which is a turn count experience so how you allocate experience to units funds a key amount of money and the value of items you have with you and survival which means you don't have dead units or like all your playable units survive to achieve the maximum amount of tactics you need to complete chapters quickly experience meant giving a specific amount of experience to all or most of your units the exact amount varies from game to game maxing the survival rank generally meant that no playable unit had died so he made it always funds meant to manage your inventory wisely sometimes hoarding items that would actually make your game play easier you had room to use or sell items especially with silver card or its equivalent item if this variant these ranks contradict each other in a way for example experience rank discourages you to use pre promotes in fe7 and ironically to save turns you need to use them or you can use arena also funds discourage you promote all your units meaning that you had to be smart with promoting your units and ironically again you need to balance the use of pre promoted units and group units It is due to this that rating units in a rank run is pointless because you need to use them at some point regardless of how good or bad they are. FE4 was probably the first game in the series to have a rank run. If I'm wrong, just put which game was in the comment section. Which game was the first one to be ranked? History of tiring. In the early days of tiring, maybe there was good tires, but in general, it was quite obvious that no one had attempted doing an S rank run because it was mostly theory crafting, slow pace playing, which involved supports impractical in a rank run because you need to complete the game in a turn count that didn't encourage support building. Mika explained it in one of his videos, which I'll put a link in the description. At some point, either due to hacking or multiple items, whichever one was first, a guide to us ranking was made. The first one was probably at the Serena Forest. On the other hand, was Donald One Five One who started uploading his FE Six Zero Percent Growth LTC run on YouTube and probably posted it on Serena Forest regularly. I think most players are mind blown seeing. Dawned on LTC a zero percent growth run at that time. Even I, who watched this around four years later, was mind blown. It involved rigging at times, but zero percent growths tend to require rigging at some point anyway. 
For example, in a field, Cormac needs it needs a crit and a previous skill line skill line in chapter twenty. One of the weak skill line, guess. Now I'm not sure how many players attempted an illusion at a time, or uploaded it, but Donna is probably one of the most popular. Apologies. LTC is up to date. Also, Mecca was his co-commentator, who would be famously known for his pitfall rages on three years later. And I'll put a link of Donna's LTC FE six LTC playthrough if you want to watch it. And most people who played Fire Emblem would have watched this, but still I'll put a Mecca's pitfall playlist in the. Description. Let me script. Again, at some point, I don't know exactly. Uh, no, the script is basically a post I did long time ago, so ignore that point. Again, at some point, I don't know when or where, but it was probably Mecca or Don Don. And just correct me if I'm wrong. Hood or HP is impossible to do without spamming or warp stuff or warp skipping or maybe it's just my assumption. <sighs> and I'm not sure that I mentioned a person who attempted F H fire run without using warp stuff. Maybe it is Rengo or maybe it is someone else. <sighs> People were no doubt impressed about these playthroughs at LTCS dead or at least elite. Who are interested in it? But obviously, not every player will play like Don Don did, or even Don Don might prefer casual runs once in a while. I honestly don't know. I assume you prefer. I mean, games are most relaxing stuff. At least for most people. So a new question arrived: How do I define how a unit is viable or not in a specific game? Fire Emblem players search for a metric, and that metric, which was universally accepted by majority of Fire Emblem players who did hard mode at that time, was efficiency. And so that's a topic in this video. Efficiency and examples of efficiency. So how would I define efficiency? Based on experience, of course. Efficiency is when a player attempts to complete a map as quickly as possible, but it has a few factors that an LTC run wouldn't consider. Those factors are reliability, which is otherwise known as minimal or no rigging, unless it's absolutely required progress. Otherwise, an efficiency run wouldn't involve rigging. And preferably achieving all the side objectives, which generally had items or units, recruitable units, that would help a player in the long run of the game. It also involves using on your resources like legendary weapons and silver weapons, brave weapons, killer weapons, etc. Smartly, or staves like warp and rescue, in which both are vital, yes, depending on the game. Because some difficulties won't have warp, and some won't have rescue. Some games won't have rescue. In efficiency runs, a player can also use a suboptimal unit like Lilina or Luke from FE6. Lilina is a tactical nuke, and Luke is an average mage. And still complete most chapters quite efficiently. But you need to work harder to, well. Save turns, yes. If eleven warp, for example, literally breaks the game, along with the use of hammer and multiple warp staves, and getting it regularly, which is multiple warp staves anyway. Even a zero percent growth turn can be complete by just warping a boss killer and your lord, which is smart in this case. And in a separate game, for example, in chapter twelve, Radger should one shot a manikeet boss even in hard mode with his handle, of course. You should easily get his S rank, even if you promote him like you know chapter twenty. Yes. 
Similarly, Rudger Rudger kills Vyvan Lodge and almost every legendary weapon in FE6. Perform roughly the same way. Though obviously you need to use them wisely to prevent a bad ending in case they break. In case you never played FE6. Basically there are around 8 legendary weapons. And if any of them break or you miss and you obtain this legendary weapons in guidance aside chapters. If you either and to obtain this guidance chapters you need to get certain conditions in a satisfy certain conditions in the previous chapter which includes turn count and keeping a unit alive in general or one of them if you miss a legendary weapon or you break the legendary weapon before chapter 22 the game ends at 22 however the game has like 24 chapters I think 25 Basically feels like an incomplete ending if you get ended at 22. That's a spoiler free way I can explain it. Okay, back to the topic. In F11, a 4 to 6 might ride his vein as one of the forges used to beat H5 enemies, and the majority of them are cavaliers. In F12, a 6 might Draco Pike. Should one shot most Vyvans in H3 or Lunatic mode or Lunatic reverse? Reliability is linked to no rigging, but it also involves strategies that lets you survive enemy phase reliably or killing some enemies reliably. For example, Marcus could possibly die in Hector Hard mode. Well, any unit can die in any Fire Emblem game, but for the sake of this discussion. While he fights multiple units and moves on to recruit Priscilla, giving him Iron Sword, Javelins, or Hand Axes, and Hand Axes, along with one Vulnerary, should greatly increase his chance to survive until he visits the village, which has Priscilla in it. Or save the village. There are more complex or better strategies, but bef- because I'm partly familiar with FE7, which I recently completed Hector Hard mode, so ignore it. And partly bef- because I need to give a simple example, I chose the case. Here's the keys, McDonald's of opinion and efficiency, which she discussed with Delche. So basically, Delche gave an eye opening view for Ziggy. And this is what Ziggy says anyway Efficiency means a lot of things. In real life, it means running an operation at maximum capacity while using minimum expenditures. Despite being a much less serious business in a video game, you can still play Fire Emblem economically. It goes a long way in allowing players to expand a number of strategies. They can perform a single map or let them tackle harder and more interesting challenges which can be self-imposed or otherwise. An efficient run in Fire Emblem is characterized by balancing out every aspect of the game by only investing in what is absolutely necessary for the successful implementation of a strategy whether it be time, turns, cash, experience, stat boosters, the works I don't know what works mean but let's copy that that doesn't work for anyway our concept an efficient run makes the most out of all of these factors allow the player to complete maps with decent reliability and in a somewhat brisk pace. So, the prime aim of efficiency is to get a reliable one and a low turn count, but you're not rigging it to make it least like an LTC one. I 
and I'll put Django's post by efficiency in the description now cost to reward ratio a part of efficiency involves a unit's cost to reward ratio here cost means investment on a unit which generally meant giving experience that boosts the right weapons or a promotion item if the unit is in a pre-promote and here reward means the performance ideally with no cost but the majority of units require some investment or cost to perform well if the cost is less than the reward is high the unit in general is considered pretty good if a unit performs with no cost and provides great rewards a performance that that unit is a must have unit whether you use it or not or whether you like it or not it's up to the player but generally almost everyone would use them for example Kyren and part of Radiance needs Kyren or Kyren I don't know pronunciation needs enough battle ex bonus experience to get tools and procs using a for making the steel axe way zero or basically has no ace penalty with the steel axe with 15 strength that should let him wield steel axes without any penalties since the penalties of speed are linked to weapon weight and strength in a deadly series instead of constitution from the official GBA games this is an example of a unit that requires some experience to become top or high tier Titanium part of Radiance and Set and Radiance sub Secret Stones do not require or need any investment. They only require boss skills and weapons because you can't kill units with weapons to reach some benchmarks, stats, and they almost always are the first units to so kill bosses in a respective game, making them a must have unit if you consider playing efficiently or having an easy time in the higher difficulties in the case of stat booster investment there are several examples but I will pick up three cases Jill and part of Radiance who is a dragon knight requires a speed wing and a powering maybe a set of rope along with some bonus experience essentially curb storm the game and this is completely optional but Jill can use a master seal once you think mm. she will have 15 cent whether it is the fact that she would get 15 cent after promotion or before promotion is up to the player also Jill and Radiant Dawn will take the self rope powering speed wing and most of the stat boosts along with bonus XP to essentially become the best unit in Dawn Brigade who can juggernaut can carry the run so hard why bother investing in Jill so much when stat boosts and bonus experience would be undoubtedly asked by newer players I mean why invest in Jill because She'll be good. Okay. It's like, I don't know. Wait. I'll just rephrase it. Why invest in Jill so much at stat boosts and bonus experience would be under to make her from a seemingly what would be a mediocre unit or slightly short of, you know, seemingly mediocre unit to a best unit would be undoubtedly asked by new players. Here's the answer. Combine flight, which means essentially going anywhere. Super Kanto, or basically Kanto Plus in the GPA hacks. Or if you play Genealogy, Ratio, Part of Radiance, Radiant on or Tree Houses. You can basically hit and go back after attacking a unit. If you have a mount or a flying unit, she has access, which is essentially the best weapon because of the cost, low cost, and high might, which translates to cheap forges. 
और लिटरली चीप फोजेस दस रीजन डॉन विच इज टॉपिक पार्ट ऑफ रीजन एंड रीजन डॉन अलॉन्ग विथ गुड स्टार्ट ऑल अक्रॉस द बोर्ड दिस वुड मेक जिल रीच एंड किल मोस्ट एन एमी इवन बिफोर यर आर्मी विल रीच एन एनमी बिफोर मोस्ट ऑफ आर्मी रीच एन एनमी और यू कैन यूज मास्टर जिलो मास्टर विच एवर यू लाइक प्रेफर जिल विच इज ऑबियसली ह्यूज एडवांटेज इन मोस्ट मैप्स इन हाल नंबर शे कैन हिट एंड रन आफ्टर दैट और फ्लाई फर्दर एंड फाइट आर फ्लाइंग यूनिट्स एंड हार्ट फ्लाई फर्दर और फ्लाई एंड फाइट आर फ्लाइंग यूनिट्स हार्ट टू रीच दिन लाइक द रेवन लगूस एंड हर जॉइनिंग चैप्टर which is in a boat by the way the next example involves two units that request similar items to perform well throughout the game if p7 needs uh, marcus needs a speed wing and a speed block to need a bench mark of 14 should get a speed wing in the easier modes at mid game However, you get a guiding ring instead of hector hard mode. So, depends on which difficulty you're playing. Should let Marcus double most units throughout the game, or alternatively, you can use the brave lance. Similarly, Jusel from F E eight requires a speed wing. To reach its speed, 14 speed benchmark and fire emblem 8, 20 for count creature campaign. But you can buy stat bonuses anyway. Or yeah, you can buy stat bonuses post game and easily get funds as long as you do few rounds of dollar of money. The third example is melody. You have two ways to make a good. Gamble at arena to raise it at twenty in the joining chapter, or promote her and give her a speed wing, which essentially gives her four speed without even giving her experience. Of course, the second outcome is more efficient, saves time and turns. Even though doing both actions give a good, give you a good melody. Doing the second option is also safe because there's some risk in the unit dying, and also it makes chapter thirteen easier. An example you'd heard if you had seen Mika's pitfall videos is Shana. In short, Mika tells you to level up Shana to ten and promote her immediately before Western Isles. The advantage advantages of promoting her before Western Isles Islands outweigh promoting her later. This is mainly due to her massive speed and luck, which gives her a void, and also swords, which have weapon triangle advantage against three fourth of the enemies in the Western Isles. However, she does have a post in court, so it doesn't make a difference whether you promote her earlier or later. And promoting early her earlier does give her a significant boost in HP and defense if she needs to take a hit. If she takes a hit, and also she'll be a lot closer to A rank lances, which means access to silver lance and extra damage. Fire emblem meet Vanessa. And if we see Sumia perform accession essentially the same way, Vanessa is an easier, an easier game. While Sumia is needs a better bot, which is a knight or a great knight. So Freddy or Frederick or Kellum, which you like to use, can help. Efficiency sometimes surprisingly. Can come from unorthodox or creative strategies. 
I'll take an ironic example. Mangs. Yeah, Mangs in his remaster attempt to get an S rank in his FE7 uses in any grace and a druid can ask. And a flux storm or no sura too if I'm wrong. In a chapter where you get heat and fight humans and heck the hard mode enemies had few weapons which made meant make uh, which meant it harder for physical units to fight because of weapon triangle. This strategy I think was brilliant because not only did Kenas ignore the weapon triangle for most units or at least enemies which had evil weapons. She also survived enemy phase along with killing multiple enemies in turn one, turn one which in turn however he played later on definitely made the map easier and that's all I think I know about efficiency well let me know your definition of efficiency down below in the comment section or you can click the recruit like button by pressing it or join my army pressing subscribe Welcome you viewers, I'm Doctor97 Presenting you a topic New topic About efficiency in Fire Emblem So, let me introduce a topic Efficient, Efficiency, you might have heard this term if you check Tireless unit discussions, whether it was a chat or a debate, most of you probably got roasted by an experienced player at some point when they did a mistake. Frankly speaking, efficiency in a game is a complex term. Before defining efficiency, in which there are multiple definitions. Fire Emblem is a single player game, so feel free to play however you like. But keep in mind that efficient strategies will make your game a lot easier to play and you should consider using a few of them if not all, especially if you don't agree with a specific strategy or point. Okay, so rank runs and ranking systems. On the earlier days of tiring, around a decade ago or so, players obviously had no clue on how to define tires. They had no metric to define what strat was optimal and what strategy was not optimal. Say for official.